Welcome, welcome. For today's video, I'm going to review The Beast Must Die. The Beast Must Die is a 1974 British horror film directed by Paul Annett and written by Michael Winder, and it's based on the short story There Shall Be No Darkness by James Blelsch, which was originally published in Thrilling Wonder Stories. So what makes this film special is that it has a gimmick where the viewer is invited to unfold the mystery along with the characters, and where the audience is asked to guess the werewolf's identity based on clues from the film. So without further ado, let's get into it. The film begins at a rural English countryside, and we meet our protag millionaire Tom Newcliffe, played by Calvin Lockhart, who was in Cotton Comes to Harlem and Uptown Saturday Night, and he was also King Willie in Predator 2. Anyways, Newcliffe here is running for his dear life from some hunters. Well, that ended quickly. Just kidding, he's alive, as the hunters are using blanks. Uh, blanks, of course. An added personal touch of mine. I thought maybe uh, it would give you an extra kick. Uh, dude, have you ever heard of something called cocaine? Anyways, Tom here has invited a group of people along with his wife. Caroline, played by Marlene Clark, who was a fashion model and was well known as Janet Lawson from the sitcom Sanford and Son. Oh, and she was also married to Lando himself, Billy D. Williams, for a few years. And interestingly enough, her voice in this film was dubbed by actress and singer Annie Ross, a member of the jazz vocal trio Lambert, Hendrix, and Ross. Now back to the movie. Tom invited this group of people to spend some time in his mansion. For what reason? Reason, because he reveals that one of them is a werewolf and therefore must be killed and he takes his werewolf hunting very seriously for instance he has the entire house under surveillance as well as motion sensors in the grounds around the mansion and the security system is overseen by his associate Pavel played by Anton Diffring who played his fair share of German characters in the Blue Max where eagles dare and in the American miniseries Series, the Winds of War. Anyways, let's introduce the rest of our cast of characters, like disgraced diplomat Arthur Bennington, played by Charles Gray, who was Blofeld in Diamonds Are Forever, and pianist Jan Gilmore, played by Sir Michael Gambon, aka the second Dumbledore. And there's Jan's wife, Davina Gilmore, played by Siron Madden who was in the miniseries A Married Man Opposite Sir Anthony Hopkins and is an associate member of the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts. Anyways, there's Paul Foote, played by Tom Chadbon, who was in Casino Royale and Game of Thrones. And Paul here is an artist who was recently released from prison for cannibalism. I started out to be a doctor. Really? Yes, really. There were nine of us medical students involved. We each ate a piece of human flesh. What I don't know is why. Curiosity? Bravado? I don't know. Jeez, 70s Hannibal was really weird. And finally, there's Professor Lundgren, played by the man himself, Peter Cushing, a.k.a. Van Helsing, a.k.a. Dr. Frankenstein, a.k.a. Grand Moff Tarkin. Charming to the last. And his character is an archaeologist and a werewolf enthusiast. And Tom here explains that they are all here as they have some connection to a mysterious death. If only I could believe it was a joke. But you never joke. That leaves only one other alternative. You're out of your mind. No shit, Later on, Jan here tries to leave, but Tom chases his ass down with a funky soundtrack. 
Oh, and did I forget to mention that the filmmakers were capitalizing on the success of black exploitation films? Seriously, that's why Calvin Lockhart is here. Anyways, Tom stops Jan from leaving and takes him to the mansion. And we get a dinner scene where Professor Lundgren gives us and the audience some info on werewolves while dinner is served extra rare. Make no mistake, the werewolf is a victim, begins to change identity. The urge to eat human flesh is uncontrollable. Its appetite must be assuaged. Guess what, I've just lost mine. <laughs> oh, it's funny, cause it's true. Then Jan suggests using the silver candlestick holder to provoke an allergic reaction as silver is deadly to werewolves, but to no avail. And the reason why is because there's no wolfbane pollen in the air to help the silver, which I call bullshit. And since you've completely succeeded in wrecking dinner, I think I'll have a stiff drink. I'll join you. Well, if that was dinner, I can't wait for the cabaret. Well, I can't wait for dessert. Later that night, Tom checks out his wolfbane plant in his greenhouse. Then someone tries to kill him, but they miss. Tom chases this assassin to a shit shack, where Tom again gets attacked with a pitchfork. Luckily for him, the assassin has stormtrooper aiming, and the pitchfork only has two prongs. He then brings his plant of wolfbane and spreads the pollen in the air during a full moon, and again, it fails to produce any werewolf reactions. How long before any change takes place? I do not know for sure. If the werewolf is young and the disease in its early stages, then the willpower may hold off the change for a few hours. Well, that sucks! Later that same night, Tom and Pavel watch Paul go to his room and see his hairy ass hands, which means he's either a werewolf or has been jerking off way too much. I uh, didn't think to bug the bathrooms. Thank God for that. No one wants to see a hairy asshole. Oh great Tom, now you invented 1970s OnlyFans. Then Tom gets some shut-eye while cosplaying as Blade. And I have to admit, I would have done the same thing. Meanwhile, Tom's security system tracks someone or something leaving the mansion. And Tom goes off to hunt the werewolf. It's almost all you. Moreover, the werewolf is heading back to the mansion to kill Pavel, and Tom tells him to find something silver to protect himself, and he gets a small-ass gun. Dude, you're in the 70s. Get a 44 Magnum like everybody else. And we finally get to see the werewolf. Aww. What an asshole! And yeah, that is our werewolf. And it's very threatening if you're a cat. Anyways, Pavel gets killed and the werewolf trashes the security system, which makes Tom angry and he suspects it was Paul. Come on, no use playing possum. What's the matter? Wake up, damn you! What an asshole! And it turns out Paul took sleeping pills, so he's clear. The next morning, Caroline asks Tom that Davina wants to take Jan back to town, and Tom is like, fuck that shit, and sabotages the cars. And Tom nearly gets shot with an arrow by a drunk-ass Paul. Why aren't you with the others? Been tracking you. <laughs> Hunting the hunter. That is pretty sus. Later on, Tom tells them about the car and everybody is pissed. Hell, Tom even does the candlestick test again. Enough! <laughs> I've had enough. You've let your passion for hunting turn into a bloodlust. And I'll have no part of it. This is what you wanted. Blood. Well, technically not your blood. After that shit, Tom loads his gun with silver bullets until he hears the werewolf's howl. To the hunter copter. <laughs> By the way, this is a day for night shot, which doesn't make a lot of sense when the pilot is wearing his sunglasses at night. Anyways, Tom finds the werewolf and starts blasting, and he misses again. The 
Werewolf heads to the shit shack and Tom goes full Rambo on this bitch. Then out of nowhere, Caroline shows up with their dog, and we get an animal fight scene. Well, at least this isn't an Italian exploitation film, because then that dog would get hurt for real. Then the werewolf goes after the helicopter pilot, and they're just hugging it out. See? And Tom shoots everything but the werewolf. Damn, even the dog isn't safe from the werewolf. And Tom puts out the dog Old Yeller style. After that depressing note, Tom goes back to the mansion and starts interrogating everybody. And they realize Bennington isn't there with them. Oh the next morning, Tom states that tonight is his last chance to kill the werewolf. And I warn you both, tonight, the beast must die. Eh, eh, he said it, he said it. Then Paul tries to escape but can't because of an electric fence and Tom has a gun. And we finally get to the infamous part about this film. This is the werewolf break. Have you guessed who the werewolf is? You have 30 seconds to give your answer. All right, I get it! Anyways, Tom subjects the remaining group to one last test, placing a silver bullet in their mouths. And Paul is proven innocent, and so is Davina and Lundgren, and let's see if Caroline is too. Zero to 100 real fucking quick. Yep, Caroline is a werewolf, but not the original werewolf Tom was hunting, as Lundgren deduced that Caroline must have contracted the werewolf disease while taking care of her dog's wounds due to an open cut on her hand she sustained from earlier, and both Tom and Lundgren hear Davina screaming... <laughs> Tom then enters the woods to hunt the werewolf, and he finally finds the werewolf, and he finally kills it, and the werewolf reverts to its human form. Tom returns to Lundgren and Davina and realizes that he has been bitten by the werewolf, thus condemning him to inherit the creature's curse. But Tom is like, Fuck this shit, I'm out. And that was The Beast Must Die. And as far as I know, I couldn't find any information if this film was a hit or not. But I did find out that the director hated this version of the film and made an alternate version with the werewolf break being cut out under the title Black Werewolf. So what do I think of it? And not gonna lie, I'm kinda split on this. On one hand, it does have an interesting concept, especially with the film being both a murder mystery and a monster movie. However, it is poorly executed, as we barely get any clues on the other characters to see if they could be the werewolf or not. 
Also with the characters, the only ones I found the most entertaining were Tom and Lundgren, because the character Tom is very interesting as he is committed to hunt this werewolf no matter what. And also, as somebody who has hunted werewolves in the past, I gotta say, his game is weak. Like, this guy misses every single shot. I mean, seriously, how bad is your aiming? He makes the stormtroopers in Star Wars look like better shots. But I will give him credit, I did like how he had a security system for tracking the werewolf. And he has style. And with Lundgren, well it's because it's Peter Cushing. He always brings his A-game in these films. As for the other characters, they're not very interesting. Especially with Jan and Davina. And also, it's not that scary. And the werewolf is just a dog with a, with a makeshift mane covering it. And the whole time I saw it, I wanted to pet it like, Who's a son of a bitch? Are you a son of a bitch? What a look. He thinks he's people. Hell, even the dog was having a good time. Like, look at him, he's having the time of his life. Also, most of the time, I can barely see shit. Like I mentioned before, many of the scenes of the film are day for night shots. And most of the time, I can barely see shit. And also, I, I liked how gory Pavel's death was. So overall, this film isn't, like, scary, or with the mystery part making any sense, but you will be entertained on how cheesy it is. So I give it two and a half werewolves out of five. And that was the video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos just like this. Stay safe out there. Goodbye. Turns out to be me. Pow! That one didn't age quite so well.